When Gaia newly created the earth, there was nothing present in the land except some plants and trees. Meanwhile, her siblings, Nyx and Erebus, were having children and were very happy. But Gaia was alone. She had no partner to mate with. So she decided to create her own children without the help of any father. She first gave birth to Uranus, the primordial god of the sky, and then she gave birth to the Uria, who rushed into the earth after being born. A moment later, the earth began to shake and great piles of dirt rose into the sky. The mountains had risen. Amongst the Uria, ten of them and their mountains especially stood out in the Greek mythology. First was Mount Etna, located in Italy. Mount Etna was the home of the forges of Hephaestus and also where Zeus imprisoned Typhon, the king of the monsters. The second was Mount Athos, located in northeastern Greece. It was underneath this mountain where Poseidon buried a giant during Gigantomachy. Third was Mount Helicon, located in Boeotia, Greece. It was a location where Tiresias witnessed Athena bathing and hence was cursed and blessed with blindness and prophetic vision. The fourth was Mount Kitharion, located in central Greece. This mount was a sacred location to Dionysus. It was also the location where King Pentheus was ripped from limb to limb by his mother and her friends. Fifth was Mount Nysos, which is the only one whose location is unknown. It was the mountain where Dionysus was brought up as a child. The sixth was Olympus, the most famous of the Uria. Olympus was the home of the twelve Olympian gods that we know of today, including Zeus. Seventh was also named as Olympus, which was located in Turkey somewhere. The eighth Uria was Mount Othris. It's the location where Zeus and his siblings were born. Ninth was Mount Parnas, located in Attica. Tenth and the last of the famous Uria was Mount Molus, located in Turkey. It was the place where music competition between Apollo and Pan took place. Uria was some of the first immortals in the Greek mythology, and it's thanks to them that we have the mighty mountains that we see today.